Here we are in our custom zero homepage going into the new company file. We started up in a prior presentation, get great guitars. Last time we started up the company file, took a brief look at the general ledger and then some navigation tools. Now we want to take a look at the settings that will be in place by default from zero when we start up the new company file. So if we go to the icon on the upper right, we have the profile settings as well as the account settings. So if you want to go into the general account settings here, your password and so on, that is here. The profile settings, if I take a brief look at that, also allows you to join the Zero community and share your knowledge with others. So you can turn on your public profile to become listed in our user directory and become part of our growing community where you can ask and give advice to like-minded Zero users. You can also help improve Zero by suggesting and voting on new features. So if you want to participate in that, you can do so. I'm going to go back up top where it says back to the Get Great Guitars, our actual company file. The other major location for the settings are going to be in the drop down up top. And then we have our settings. We took a brief look at these in the prior presentation. They're broken out into the two primary categories of general and features. This time we want to look at the general. Next time we'll probably go into the features in more detail. So the, the features overview, we've got the organization details, address, logo, and basic financial information, users, add, remove, or modify users of this organization. You've got your currencies, manage the currencies uh, your business uses, connected apps, add and manage third-party connections to zero, and subscription and billing, change plan, and update credit card details managed by yourself whoever's signed up to the to the zero let's go into a few of these in more detail so let's go to the first one organization details so up top we have include some of your information on the online invoices you send you can learn more about that here if you so choose you can choose which details below so we have the display name get great guitars we've got the legal trade name if you have a different name you can use a you could use a different name you've got the logo note that the invoice is one of those forms of course that is going to be going out to customers usually in the form of an email and therefore customizing the invoice not just for internal accounting purposes but also for external uh, purposes to make it look nice and whatnot uh, is something you might want to uh, dive into in a little bit more detail uh, so we're going to be mainly in this practice problem focusing in on the impact of the invoice form which it does have as all the forms generally do to create the financial statements balance sheet and the income statement and related reports what is your line of business and then you've got your organization type so within the organization exempt organization partnership private foundation and so on ein number so this is going to be <clears throat> a number that if you're in the united states you would get that from the irs typically it's an employer identification number in the united states and uh, you, you don't just need it if you have employees. If you're a sole proprietor, for example, this is kind of like your business's social security number, which you still might have to give out if you have to give it to like someone who needs to 1099 you. You don't want to have to give them your your uh, social security number. You'd like to give them and you have to give them something. And therefore, even if you don't have employees, you might have an EIN number. It's fairly easy to sign up for if you're a U.S. business and you can get that. The TIN number EIN social security organization description if you want to add the details there and then uh, the postal address so i've populated some of this stuff here so i just put sole proprietorship for our business i added a general just a a, a number for an EIN number i'm not going to add an organization uh, description and then on uh, the address we've got our location so I'm going to say that we're in the, the Beverly Hills, 252 South uh, Camden Drive, Beverly Hills. And then for the physical address, I'm going to just say it's the same as the postal address. And then the telephone number, we've got the country. So I'm going to, for me, I'm going to put United States has a one. And then 55555 or something, 575, something like that. And then our email 
and our website and then if you can add fields if you so choose mobile fax ddi skype linkedin twitter facebook google and so on let's go ahead and save that now those general organization settings note could be uh, important because you might populate those on forms such as uh, invoices might need the address if you have shipping stuff then you're gonna you might uh, be pulling the addresses in general from the general information the ein might be needed to give to people sometimes for like uh, contractors or if you're a contractor or someone else uh, or something like that although you don't use that all the time and then if you have if you're in the united states then the taxes for sales tax on the state level uh, might be determined in terms of your location oftentimes could help you to, to determine whether or not you're subject to the sales tax which is like a usage tax in the united states on the state level instead of a federal level all right let's go back to the uh, settings here let's take a look at the users so the users are the people of course using uh the software so when you first set up the software, you're just gonna have uh, yourself, whoever set it up generally, is gonna be uh, a user of the software. We might have then an admin uh, user, and then you can add more users. Now, the great thing about Zero is I don't believe there's a limit to uh, the users, uh, which if you look at other softwares that are online softwares like a QuickBooks, that's usually one of the bottlenecking factors uh, the number of users that possibly could be logged in. So we could then invite another user if we so choose. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna add Jane Smith here, and then it has the options down below, give them access to. Now, obviously you're now thinking, we're thinking we've got multiple people that are going to be uh, using the Zero software to help with our, our accounting needs. And then we clearly, once we have multiple people that are working in an accounting system, we'll usually run into the idea that we wanna have some, some restrictions to what certain people can do within the accounting system. So then we have what things can they access. We have the projects here, allow this user to access projects. There may be per active user costs. Now the projects are usually something that's gonna be more specialized towards particular type of industries, possibly like a job cost type of system. So if you go into the projects, you've got how much access do they need? You have uh, limited. This limit rule is read only, but their own time entries can be added and edited. It excludes all financial information. The standard, this rule uh, suits staff who run projects, but no need to see staff and project cost information. And then the admin, this role has the same access to projects as, stand, as standard and includes staff and project cost information. So I'm gonna uncheck that one and then say, I'm not gonna use projects, let's say, uh, and I'm gonna go down here. We might touch in on how projects work, but that's not our main focus. Let's go down here to business and accounting. How much access to get do they do they need? Let's go through the different access levels here. Invoice only. This limited role suits people who create quotes and invoices or enter bills, but don't need access to bank accounts or reports. So they're they're limited on the invoicing on the sales side of things. So sales and purchases uh, only create drafts, uh, sales, quoting, and invoicing purchases purchase orders and bills, and then approve and pay sales and purchases. And then we have the bank account and balances. Uh, bank account admin can add and edit bank account details held for customer and suppliers. You've got your reports, uh, finished reports, set lock dates, edit settings, and so on. And then if I go to the standard, the sales and purchases. So you've got the bank account and balances reconcile and edit statement lines <clears throat> reports uh view and and uh rerun reports and then the edit edit settings manage user let's go to the advisor so sales and purchase is now checked off bank account and balances bank admin you have the capacity to check that off if you so choose 